The Kennel Club has labelled around 20 breeds as vulnerable. That means less than 300 registrations each year. Now it's very important that we highlight these in the hope that we can keep the breeds in existence and growing in popularity. And he is one of those breeds, it's the Lancashire Healer. Members of the pastoral group, so it means they're used for herding. Herding, here we are, hardy little dogs, wedge-shaped head, pricked ears, very alert. He's got, this one is a liver, a liver and tan. And on the tan markings, always a distinguishing feature, a little thumbprint. It's said that that's, this comes from one of its ancestors, the Manchester Terrier. Here, very hardy, a little Rolo here. They're hardy, long-lived, highly intelligent and very active. So I, it puzzles me why they are in the vulnerable list. Here is the other colour and more popular perhaps, the black and tan. Again, the same features, rectangular, a dense weatherproof coat, very alert expression, the black and tan markings. The Lancashire Healer. Here's another of our native vulnerable breeds, it's the King Charles Spaniel. And whilst their cousin, the Cavalier King Charles, is very popular, the King Charles is less numerous. In fact, less than 300 puppies registered each year. Here we have two lovely examples, the Blenheim bitch and the tricolour dog. More domed in the skull than the Cavalier and a little shorter in the foreface, but look at those lovely eyes and the expression. Now, these are one of the Royal Spaniels. The Blenheim gets its colour from Blenheim Palace, where in the reign of Charles I, it was very popular. And indeed, did you know that they, they are the only breed of dog allowed in the Houses of Parliament, dating back to Charles I's reign. The breed is becoming more popular. The breeders have made great advancement in soundness and temperament, so they are growing a little. But tell me, why do you think there are not so many of the King Charles? Because it's a connoisseur's breed and it's totally not commercial. You cannot make money out of this breed. Which is a very good thing because you want them to go to the right homes. They yes. are very and choosy where they go to. Very, very wise. And tell me, what are the breed clubs doing to help the breed? Well, we're doing breed health days to encourage people and new people into the breed. And we try and encourage new people into the breed where possible. And I think, Julia, that sometimes breeds come into fashion and go out of fashion. Take the Manchester Terrier, for instance. At the turn of the 19th century, they were really popular because they were useful. They were used as vermin dogs, keeping down the vermin. However, when they were no longer needed, the breed went into a great decline. So they too are on the list. And some of the other terriers, where they're high maintenance, a lot of trimming. Now society doesn't want dogs which are high maintenance, they want easy dogs. Yes. But of course, I think the other thing, which is a, a, a great shame, is that the craze for new designer dogs, wanting to be novel, wanting yes. to be different, instead of preserving our beautiful native breeds. Our old breeds that have been here for a long time, and it seems such a shame. I mean, these were very popular in Victorian time. They were a lady's lap dog. And also ladies used to, when they were cold, they used to have the dogs on their lap to keep warm. A I mean, warm put their hands, yeah, a little warm up. But it is a little bit like fashion, and it's a shame that fashion has come into dogs, or animals in any way, because you're messing up breeds, and I think some lovely old breeds, which have been around such a long time. And which should be preserved. Yes. And the Kennel Club, thank goodness, is doing a lot to showcase yes. them, not only at Brooks, but throughout the country at other yeah. shows yeah. and with great education about the breeds yeah. improving all the time. Yeah. Let's hope the scheme works. I hope so as well.